Welcome to practice. My name is Selena Garafino. If you are enjoying these videos, please do like and subscribe and share with your friends. If you are interested in deepening your yoga practice or perhaps taking your love and passion for yoga out into the world, I invite you to join me for your 200, 300, or 500 hour advanced yoga teacher training, live streaming, virtual self-paced, or in-person in select locations around the world. It is also one of my greatest joys to lead really potent retreats in Tuscany, Italy, in the Greek islands, and in Costa Rica, and I would love to welcome you. You can use the discount code YouTube on any of my programs to get a very special treat. Today, this short practice is all about finding and holding the middle. Martha Graham, who is the great choreographer and one of really the creators of modern dance, used to speak a lot about how critical it was to find the center and how when we find the center, when we move, and when we find the center emotionally and mentally, physically, that it's something more than physical because not only are we then finding and portraying the strength of the body, but we are aligning ourselves with the strength of the self. One of the dialogues of Katoni Yoga is that we're not talking about some imminence and transcendence thing, some out there and down here experience of the sacred and the mundane, but instead that it's a dialogue of center and circumference. My interior space and my circumstances around me, my, how I handle my heart and how I handle the world, and then finding the middle of myself. And that's what I wanna play with today. We're gonna dive right in. So please come to all fours. Plant your hands underneath of your shoulders, and we're gonna take the measure and make everything really, really precise. So spin your hands in so your middle fingers are touching. That's exactly shoulders distance apart. And then spin on the heel of the hand, the base of the thumb, so the middle fingers point forward and broaden your collarbones out to each side. And then get your knees so that they are right underneath of your hips and you have 90 degrees everywhere. From here, we'll start out nice and slow. Just start to move your spine a little bit. For me, this is looking like pelvic circles. You might be more inclined to find a cat-cow type configuration and shape in the spine. Just start to put a little breath and a little movement through the form. Very good. Nice. And even here, start to feel that thread of the spine that in the esoteric dialogue is the sushumna, the gracious stream, it's the sutra atman, the thread of the self. And notice how you can orient your attention around that central thread, even as you're starting to put some movement that is non-linear, some movement that is taking you, you know, at least from the outside off of your center line. Good, and then pause in the center of yourself, curl your toes under, and come up and back to a downward facing dog. And since it's more than likely your first down dog of the day, just paddle through your feet first, bending one leg and then the other. Nice and easy with the breath, just starting to open up the backs of the legs. And then when you're ready, take your feet hip distance apart, come onto the balls of the feet, fold at your hip crease and lift your buttock bones up high and wide and take your gaze slightly forward. And again, find yourself on that central axis of the spit. Lift the buttock bones high, take the gaze ever so slightly forward. And now with this deep bend in the knees, walk the feet in just a little bit so that your thighs are coming towards the belly. And now lower your knees towards the floor, hovering them just like one inch off of the floor, looking forward, super strong in the arms and then buttock bones up and back, keeping the knees bent. Do that a few more times. Hover the knees, look forward, and then press the seat back. Good, start to just fold and unfold from the hip like that, building some heat in the body right off of the bat. Rocking the knees towards the floor, just hovering like one inch off, and then the buttock bones high. Do about, I don't know, maybe five to 10 of those. That'll start to heat you up really quickly, warming from the lower body first. Good, and then hold the downward facing dog once again. Can wiggle the feet back a little bit. And now come forward to a plank, stacking the shoulders right over the wrists, look forward, and then hinge from the hip crease, buttock bones back. Good, do that again, forward to plank, and then buttock bones high and wide. Start to shoot forward and back again, about five to 10. Pumping the breath. Maybe four more. Just building a little heat, moving currency through the form. Very good, and then hold downward facing dog. Part of immunity is not, I never get sick, 
or I never have a mental problem, but it's how quickly can you get over something? Again, how quickly can you find the moving middle? Walk your feet forward to your hands. And when you arrive at the top of the mat, measure two fists between the arches of your feet, and then just hang over your legs for a moment. Think that your knees are bending out ever so slightly towards your armpits. Think that the crown of the head is melting towards the floor. Think that some of your weight is shifting towards the ball of the foot, so it's nice and light and buoyant. A couple more breaths here. Tracing that central line now, imagining it's almost like there's a plumb line from the pelvic floor down into the core of the planet. Take opposite palm to opposite elbow, bend your knees deeply, and lift your pelvis and your torso parallel to the floor. And imagine that your hips are moving back and your elbow points are moving forward, and then sit back into a chair pose. And now push all the way up to stand, drive your pubic bone forward into a little back bend, unfolding yourself. Good, bend the knees, sink the hips, chair. And then keep folding, belly to thighs, and then lift your buttock bones up to the sky. Good, again, reverse that, sit back into the chair, passing through that position where you're parallel to the floor. Push all the way up to stand, drive the pubic bone forward. And then one more time, bend the knees, sink the hips, fold over the legs, re-bend the knees, back into the chair pose, push all the way up to stand, pubic bone forward. Good, and then release your arms to your side for a moment and play with finding that plumb line here. So I'm gonna turn and face you for a moment. Separate your feet a little bit and drop into that sensation of a central axis almost like there was a golden thread from the universal above the crown of the head, dropping down through the baby soft spot of your head, moving right down by the spine, and then connecting you to the core of the planet. And I want you to just find a nice little shift side to side, but even as you're shifting, see if you can find a sensation of holding the middle, a sensation of holding the thread of the self that even as you're sort of, it may again appear that you're off center, that you're holding the stability of the self, the stability of the physical form. Good. You might even let your arms move with you a little bit. And as the arm is sort of taking you side to side, again, there's still a piece of you that is holding the middle. Just play with that sensation. It might be really subtle. Good. One more breath or two, just sort of gently again playing, how do I suspend bottom to top in space, hold the middle of myself even when there's movement? Good, in case it wasn't clear yet, that's also a metaphor for life. Come back to the middle, feet hip distance apart once again, inhale, stretch your arms up. Exhale and forward fold, right back over your legs. Inhale and halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana, stretch your spine forward. And exhale, walk your feet back to downward facing dog. Lower your knees to the floor, back to all fours. Good, from here, take your right leg and stretch it back behind you. Good, reach back through the ball of that right foot, nice and strong. And now take your right toes, turn them out to the side. I gotta move my blankets. Turn your right toes out so they're pointing towards the right side of your mat. Draw your right leg out to the side of you and lower it to the floor. Come up on your fingertips, curl your left toes under, and now circle around yourself. And I'm really letting myself roll around on my right foot. So my right foot isn't pinned to the floor, and yours doesn't have to be either. Looking slightly out so you're potentiating yourself. Good, change directions, just lubricating the hip joint. And again, can some piece of your awareness be focused on holding the center line? even as you're getting spherical. The line always referencing the sphere, this dialogue of imminence and transcendence around, you know, Ferris wheel-like breath in the body. Change directions if you haven't. And then pause in the center of yourself once again. Place your hands down. Bring your left knee a little more to the center of your mat. Now pick up your right foot. Circle it back behind yourself, and now cross your right foot, your right knee, pardon me, behind your left. Very good. And then from here, take that right leg up, and then lower it back down. 
Lift it up and lower it right back down. Good, lift it up and draw it back down. Everyone always wants to stretch their hips in a yoga practice, but it's just as important to find strength and stability here. A couple more like that. And I'm sort of shifting back, giving my hips a little bit of a stretch in between. Good, one more time like that. Lift and lower it back. Good, lift it up and hold. Very nice, now cross the right leg behind the left. Widen your shins away from each other as much as you can. Spread the tops of the feet into the mat. Now from here, take your right arm and stretch it forward. And now trace your right arm with your gaze. Circle your right arm to the sky all the way back behind yourself and then flip your right wrist. Good, so the right wrist is now flipped. Lift off the center of that palm and broaden the right collarbone out to its own side. Let's do that on the other side. Left arm goes forward, trace it with your gaze. Hold the middle, even as you spin around yourself. Flip the left wrist. Both wrists are flipped now. And now hold the middle again, broaden both collarbones. Find that central axis, the great Tai Chi, the Sutra Atman, and now spin the pelvis to the right. One of the dialogues we play with in Katona Yoga is this dialogue that the right side of us is how we handle the world, and the left side of us is the hearth of the home, of your personal magical abode, this body. And it's where we handle our heart and our relationships. So right now we're spinning to the right, which is the spin of time. It's the spin of a watch face. So now pause yourself and go to the left, go towards your heart towards the emotive, be a little more counterculture. Very good. And then pause right in the center of yourself again. We're gonna flip the wrist back around, reversing what we did. So reach your left arm back behind you, take it up to the sky, hold the middle, hold the middle as the left palm comes down. Shift over to the left hand, take the right arm up, spin it, swim it forward, and plant your right palm down. Very good. And then from here, curl your toes under now and find a bent knee, downward facing dog with crossed legs. So the right knee is plugging into the back of the left knee. Take the gaze ever so slightly forward, nice and bouncy in the knees. And now walk your hands back to your feet. Now when your hands come back to your feet, your right heel is gonna drop, the left heel is gonna stay lifted. Wiggle the toes back a little bit so your baby toes are in one line. Bend the right knee more deeply into the left. Very good. From here, take your left fingertips to the floor underneath of your sternum. Find a little sense of a back bend towards the top of the mat, your tailbone moving back, your sternum forward. Bring your right hand to your sacrum. Deep bend in the knees, start to pivot your chest to the right, and then take your right arm up towards the sky. Nice spinal twist. So good. Very nice. Lower your right fingertips back to the floor. Walk your hands back forward, keeping the cross of the legs, and then drop your knees down. Okay, creep your cur toes curled under. Plant your left hand right in the center of the mat. We're gonna pivot and hover up on our knees again. And I want you to just pivot. There's only one way to go, towards the right, bringing your heels to the floor. And now lift your hips. Take your right arm up and over your head in a little back bend. Good, redescend the hips, pivot to the right so the right knee crosses behind the left once again. Right? Just like that. Let's try that one more time. Pivot, hips are gonna dip. Lift your hips high as your right arm comes up overhead. Drop your hips once again. Pivot back to the center line. We're gonna add on to this a little bit. When you pivot back down, lower down onto your right and left forearms, and then I want you to kick your right leg up nice and high. Stretch it high, cross it back behind the left knee. Plant your left palm and pivot back onto the heels, hips dip, back bend. Good, dip the hips again, pivot to the right, drop to right forearm and to knees. Bring the left forearm down, pick up that right leg, kick it high. Good, lower the right knee behind the left. Plant your left hand, hover your knees, pivot onto your heels, back bend. It's a complex movement pattern. Lower the hips, pivot back towards the mat, right forearm, left forearm. Lift the right leg nice and high. Let's do that 22 more times. Not 20 more times, that would be absurd. <laughs> right knee behind left. 
plant the left palm, unwind it, right arm to the sky, hips high, lower the hips, pivot around, right elbow down, left elbow down, kick the right leg up, last time, right knee behind left, plant the left hand, pivot the hips and back bend, so good, lower the hips, right forearm down, left forearm down, kick the right leg up, cross the right leg behind your left, walk back up onto your hands, so nice you guys, grab your blankets, if you need a prop for this, we're gonna come back into a Gomukhasana, and all you're gonna do is sit back, just like so. That got me sweating. So here, adjust yourself so that you can find the center of your hips. And you might need to pull your shins closer to your body here, your feet closer to your body, or they might be more wide. Grab a hold of your ankles or your feet, or you could have your hands on blocks, and start to stir your pelvis to the right. <sighs> nice job. Big breath. Stir the whole of your pelvis. If you've been holding your breath during the practice, find it again. A Ferris wheel, spherical breath. Center and circumference. Here again, there's that sense of a plumb line, of that golden thread from the universal above the crown of the head, down, through the spine, dropping into the core of the planet. Change directions. Nice big breath. And then pause right in the center of yourself. I'm gonna give you some options here for where we're going. We're gonna start to hinge forward. And for some of us, this might already be enough. You might stay a little more upright. If you have the space available to you, Crawl yourself forward, sending your hips back, your heart forward. And then if you wish, come all the way down. Take your right arm to catch your left foot, and then cross your left arm over the top, grabbing your right big toe with your left hand. So we're in a little crisscross here. Now my bottom arm is my right arm. I'm gonna unthread it and spin to the right. Right arm reaches up and back behind me. I'm gonna take my right arm over my head, big reach, and cross it over my left. Now listen, if this isn't possible for you, you can do this much more upright with your hands just on blocks or on the floor. So modify as needed. Left arm is on the bottom now. I'm gonna uncross my left arm, take it up towards the sky. Broaden your collarbones, big reach. Take your left arm overhead, reach for your right foot. Let's do this two more times. Right arm to the sky, two more sets. Reach your right arm up and over, grab your left foot, pivot center. Left arm up to the sky, reach over your head and pivot center. A little more fluency now, last set, right arm up. Up and overhead, big reach. Grab the left foot, last time, left arm up. Cross it over, big reach. So nice, you guys, lengthen your spine forward to rise. We're gonna shift back forward, keeping this shape in the legs. So rock it back forward. And now from here, grab a block if you need it. Move the blankets off to the side. And then we're gonna come up to stand on our knees. You can support yourself with a block or two if you need to. Otherwise, all the way to rise. Hook your thumbs into the base of the sacrum. Drive your pubic bone forward. And then take your arms up, interlace them behind your head. Hug the elbow points forward. And find a little back bend, squeezing that right hip forward. Good, holding the center line. Very nice, come on back down. Set the block aside. This is gonna feel super nice. Stretch the right leg back, lower the right foot down next to the left knee. Square yourself off again, and let's take a moment just back in a normal downward facing dog. Finding symmetry again, holding that center line. Come forward to a plank pose. Keep your toes curled under and draw your pubic bone towards the mat, floating up dog. And then back to down dog. So nice, you guys, really beautiful. Lower back to your knees for the other side. Again, plant the hands underneath of your shoulders. Start by taking your left foot back behind you and lift it up. And then turn the left toes out to the side. Take the left foot out, big reach, plant it on the ground and then start with those big hip circles to the left. 
Just lubricating that left hip joint. And again, how can you play with, I can hold the center of myself even when there's velocity, even when there's movement, to find strength and dignity in the body, to self-resource, change directions, to find personal ground in the groundlessness of life. So good. Come back to the center of yourself. Really nice, you guys. Pick up your left leg, drag it back behind, and now hover your right knee to the center of your mat a little more. Cross your left leg behind your right. Shift the hips back a little bit, and then lean forward, pick the left leg up. Tap it behind the right, shift the hips back, and start to repeat that little movement pattern in and out. Just starting to create a little more space in the joint for what's to come. Good. One more time like that. Beautiful. So nice. Cross the left leg behind the right now. Separate the shins a little bit. Look forward. Take your left hand forward and then look at it. Trace it with your gaze. Big spin to the left. Take your left arm all the way up and around and flip the wrist once again. Same thing on the other side. Right arm forward. Trace it with your gaze. Take it up and around and behind yourself. Flip the right wrist. Broaden your collarbones. Look forward. Plug the tops of the feet in. And then now spin around to the left. Starting with the direction of our lunar self. Starting with the direction of our feeling self. <sighs> Big steady movement of the breath. Change directions. Go to the right. Beautiful. I cranked up the heat in the studio because it was so cold in here, and now I'm sweating like bullets. So sweating like bullets, is that a saying? Anyway, maybe you two are enjoying a holy baptism of your own making, as I like to call our miraculous sweat. Pause in the center of yourself. Let's reverse that. Take the right hand, reach it back towards your hip, trace it with your gaze all the way up and forward. And then the other side, left arm, reach it back towards your hip, trace it with your gaze, all the way up and forward. Curl your toes under, find that cross leg down dog. So walk the right foot back so that the baby toes are in one line, buttock bones high, squeeze the inner thighs deep, bend in the knees. Walk your hands back to your feet. This time, your left foot will come to the floor, right knee stays lifted, bend the left knee into the right. And then before you spin, you have to find the back bend. Find the center of yourself, fingertips on the floor, lengthen on that central axis, buttock bones back, heart forward. And now start to spin your torso to the left. Take the left arm up. Nice back bend, big opening, smooth breath. Good, take your left hand back to the floor. Walk your hands back forward and lower back down onto your knees. All right, it's time for our fun little back bend movement. So right hand comes to the mat. I'm gonna curl my toes under. You do the same. We have to go left. It's the only way to go. Pin your heels down and then back bend. Big reach, left arm up and over. Drop your hips, pivot on the balls of the feet. Lower back down. Good. We'll add the kick in a minute. Let's do that two more times. Right hand stays down. Pivot on the heels. Left arm up and over. Drop the hips, pivot back towards the mat. One more time like that. Pivot on the heels, arm up and over. Good, let's add the kick now. So you're gonna lower it down onto the left forearm, then the right. Left leg is gonna kick up and high. Drag left knee behind. Come up onto your right hand. Left arm traces the body up and overhead. Descend as you pivot. Left forearm comes down, right forearm comes down. Left leg kicks high. Trace it behind the right leg. Right hand to the mat. Left arm traces the body as you pivot and back bend. Redrop the hips. Left forearm, right forearm. Big kick. Let's do three more. Left hip behind right. Right hand pivot open. Drop your hips. Left forearm, right forearm, big kick. 
I think we have two more. <laughs> right hand down. Unravel it. Good. Hips down. Left forearm. Right forearm. Big kick. Last time. Big trace of the body. Big back bend. Left forearm. Right forearm. Big kick. So good. Walk back up onto your hands. Grab the blankets if you're using them. I love to support my pelvis. And then walk your hips back. <sighs> right shin is on top of left. Adjust yourself so you're right in the center of your hips. <sighs> Grab a hold of your ankles or hands on blocks and then spin the pelvis. Nice big breath. <sighs> Again, find a sense of you in the middle of yourself and then everything that's around you. You might play for a moment with how big you can make your energy in the spread. And then as you spin the other way, maybe play with how, how much you can contain yourself and know that this is all part of the bigger game. Finding that sense of dignity, stability, and centeredness in the body. Pause in the middle, nice big breath. Sit up on that central axis again. And then remember, you can stay more upright or you can join me and fold it forward. When we move into the twist, remember it's perfectly fine to stay way more upright. Your shins might even be crossed here rather than in this Gomukhasana configuration. Good, take your left arm under if you're taking this part of the practice. Grab your right foot, cross the right arm over the top. Now from here, left arm will uncross, spin it open. Left arm goes up and overhead, reach for your right foot, pivot center. Unthread the right arm to the sky, reach it up and overhead, grab the left foot, pivot center. Left arm up, take it up and over. Right arm, making this nice and fluid now. Good, one more set, left arm. Right arm, last time. Good, pause in the center of yourself. Lengthen forward to come up, and let's shift back forward onto the knees. You can move the blankets out of the way. Again, if you need a block, take a block to help to support yourself. Otherwise, just come right on up, right on up to stand. And many of us are gonna need to pull our shins closer together here to make this work. Interlace your hands behind your head again. Find a little back bend, squeeze the inner thighs like crazy. Good, unfold it, hands back down to the mat. Stretch the left leg back, right leg back, lower back to your knees. Take a moment in a child's pose, knees wide, feet together. Roll up through the center of yourself and come back to downward facing dog. Nice big breath. Good, buttock bones high. Find the thread of the self once again. Good, walk your feet forward to your hands. Measure two fists between the arches and fold over the legs once again. Nice, big, steady breath. Big breath in, flat back, push all the way to stand, inhale. Exhale, hinge from your hip crease, fold right back down. Good, inhale and halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Two more rounds like that. Half salutation. Inhale to rise. The whole time, exhale, fold. Finding that center of the self. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale and fold. Last time, big breath in, rise. Exhale, fold, right back down. Inhale, halfway lift. Good, exhale, and just fold. Pick up your heels with your hands. Get your knees and your armpits. Drop the crown of the head. Buttock bones high. Nice, steady, smooth breath. Good, unhook from the heels. Walk your feet back to downward facing dog one more time, and then lower to your knees. Please grab a block and sit in Varasana on a block or two, or if you prefer, sit cross-legged on a blanket. 
We're going to finish by just purifying everything with a couple of Bhati breath. Take your arms up in the shape of a V in equilateral triangle for strength, structure, and stability. Close your eyes, drop your chin just a little bit so you're lengthening the back of the neck. Make cups in your palms so of grace, which is always raining down, (laughs) it's raining down, you're ready to receive it. Find the middle again, that baby soft spot in the crown of the head, opening up the thread of the imagination, a golden thread descending from the universal, from the heavens, down through you, connecting you to the core of the planet. When you're ready, take a nice deep breath in and let's pump out a couple of bati breath. Snap the abdomen back and forcefully exhale out the nose. As you pump, think that you're clearing everything out of yourself, that you're making the body like a begging bowl for spirit, cleansing and emptying so that you can receive more of what the universe has for you, more of what life has for you, more of what you want. Use every exhalation to cleanse. Let every in-breath that is happening naturally be a support and a nourishment. Good. Exhale completely. Hook your thumbs over your head. Take a deep breath in. Sip in three little sips. One more little sniff. Hold your breath at the top. Completely full, like you shook up a champagne bottle to have a little party, a celebration for yourself, or apple cider, whatever you like. And then exhale and pop your cork. Let your fingertips touch the earth to reground you. Bring the backs of your hands to your thighs and just pause for a moment. Again, finding and feeling that central line, the dignity of the self via the body, finding that inner resource, that anchor of the self. Give gratitude for this body and this breath, this practice. When you're ready, rub your palms together in front of your face. Get some good heat between your palms. (sighs) Cup your fingertips on your hairline, palms over your eyes. Open your eyes behind your hands, letting in the dark. Release your palms, let in the light, and welcome yourself back. If you have time, I would encourage a 5 to 15 minute meditation or shavasana. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed. My name is Selena Garafino, and I am the founder and the creator of the Evolve Method. The Evolve Method is the result of 20 some years of my personal practice, almost 15 years of teaching, and over six years of running yoga teacher trainings. This program is anchored in classical yoga studies, personal development coaching with licensed professionals, and modern movement research. This really embodies what it is to be part of the Evolve Method. Our programs are systematic. Your 200-hour teacher training is a program that sets you up with all the kinesiological, the anatomical knowledge, the foundation of yoga history and philosophy, as well as a very strong anchoring in modern movement research and functional anatomy. And then out of that, when you learn this basic sequencing structure and this capacity to teach vinyasa, hatha yoga, and restorative yoga, you're able to build on that in our advanced programming, which teaches things like the energetics of asana, um, tantric teachings on mythology and embodying conscious myth in your teachings and in your practice. The program also has a ton of modern movement that comes to us from different mobility systems and joint health systems so that you can truly practice for longevity. We named this program the Evolve Method because it's about more than a physical practice. It's about you learning to navigate better every single area of your life, to be the author of your story and your destiny, to live out your dreams and to bring your medicine to the world and really be able to serve. I'm so excited to uh, give this offering to you, and I hope you'll consider joining us either online or in person.